Okay, so we're gonna hack into this one. So before you even set this big wheel on your cutter, you're gonna wanna pre-cut it, similar to how we did the cloth bound cheddar. I actually forgot to wipe down that knife. So we'll wipe that down really fast. You can use a smaller size knife. Um, really, the one thing that I do like about this size handle, when it comes to large profile wheels like this, it's nice to get some weight down on it. But by all means, like I didn't have another knife on me when you're scoring the cloth bound cheddar pieces, just use like, you can use a little paring knife if you want to, if that's easier. It's definitely probably gonna be safer for you to do it that way. So you kinda wanna set it on the edge. And then just rock your blade back and forth and you'll cut that right there. So you don't need to cut anything else. As soon as you get this, and this is only if you've been leaving the wheel out all day that this works like this, but all you need to do is just get the edge right there. That's where your wire is going to penetrate. So, so long as you get the wire into the cheese, the hardest part is getting past the rind. As soon as you get past that rind, you're golden. So, when I put this on the cutter, this is kind of going to be a little hard to see because I have to see it myself. But you don't want to lose track of where you cut that. So that way your wire lands in that hole. Because once again, if you, if you don't get it in there, it's not going to cut it. Let's see if I give you this. Can you set it over there? Thank you. Okay, so that's what the inside of this cheese looks like. This is super easy to cut once again. The, thanks to Lindsay for leaving it out the night prior to. That was like butter. So this is an 18 month aged product, the aged Gouda? Yeah, so it's a really nice aged Gouda. It's probably going to be the, the most aged Gouda in your case. This in like hardness is going to be very similar to a Parmesan Reggiano when it comes to like how hard the cheese is. I mean, taste completely different. It's a completely different family of cheese. It's not going to taste anything like your Parmesan Reggiano, but you'll find that like when they are warm, when they're cold, they're the same texture, the same hard problem to cut, if you want to call it that. Um, so the hardest part is getting past that wheel. Once you do that, you shouldn't have to score anything else because you're cutting directly into the paste. So you just want to make sure your wheel always stays center. Okay, so once you get to the quarter piece, if you're going to cut the whole quarter, you want to lay it on its side like that. Pull the wire through. So that way you see the face of the cheese. So tips are really hard to keep together. They get really thin. Obviously the tip already starts out really small. And in the beginning you're probably going to lose some tips. The more you cut the cheese, the easier it's going to be. I'll tell you right now that I'll probably lose some tips myself because the, the tip's going to get really small and you're going to keep trying to cut it in half and eventually you're going to lose, you're going to get this really awkward piece, which is fine. You could use that for samples if it's really, really bad. or um, have a little bit in the case, whichever you prefer. So you don't square it off. No, I mean, you want to try to stay away from that because that's just wasting the cheese. I mean, if you have a customer there that's watching you cut the wheel and you want to like cut off a tip and give it to them, then that's awesome. But if you just get into the habit of always tipping your cheese, I mean, that's a lot of cheese that you're just basically throwing away at that point. It's too small to resell it. And if there's no customer right in front of you, what else are you going to do with it? So just try to stay away from tipping your cheese every single time. Well, of course you would do that, but. <laughs> Solution. So this is what I'm talking about. You'll get this weird tip right here. Now when you get to this point, you can tip it. 
because you won't really lose a whole lot of, of cheese. The reason why I do that is because when we go to wrap it, if you have that thin little piece, it's just gonna fold in on itself and it's just gonna cause more problems at the end of the day. So if you have any weird ends like that, you can just kind of nick them off with your wire. But you're not gonna lose anything more than like a few crumbs doing it that way. This price point, and we'll just put one on the scale for this too, at $12.99, that's a great piece of cheese. $12.99. I mean, you almost do three at $12.99. I wonder how much that would be. So we'll get Lindsay to try it for us. I'll cut one and a third so we can see the difference. See, it's not hard to cut cheese. Do you guys agree? It's not that hard to cut this, right? And imagine the difference it's going to look like in our stores having it hand cut. Let me weigh one of these just to see how much it would be. Yeah, go for it. Well, should you demonstrate wrap first? Yes. Okay, so. One of the reasons why I said, like, let's say you only need to cut this many pieces for whatever reason, you want to stay away from leaving your cheeses like this. The reason why is because all the, like, synthetic lights that you have in your store, they will bleach this cheese. And this cheese is such a beautiful orange color, and it's something that really grabs a customer's attention. You don't want it to be pale and bleached and sitting out. So the more you can keep your rind together all the way around, the more it will protect the cheese and later on your bleaching won't be so bad. So that fourth piece again was $4.94. Wow. Oh no! <laughs> I killed it, I'm sorry. All right. So then, yeah, third pieces for sure. God, that is a killer price. We want Whole Foods to be envious of our cheese program.